Back at the book segment tonight, the week in review from the Ingram Angle. There is a revolt going on about President Obama's immigration order. 26 states are now collectively suing the president, stop him from not enforcing immigration law. Join us now in Washington, Ms. Laura, who is an attorney as well as a pundit. So the suit is directed to the Supreme Court, it looks like, right? Well, they would start the suit in, uh, the, on the state level. They take this suit to federal court. So it starts on the district court level. And the argument that 26 states are making, Bill, is that there are hundreds of billions of dollars in additional expense uh, lopped onto the state because of this. And uh, it, it goes everything from, uh, in Indiana, they say we're going to have to pay welfare benefits. In Wisconsin, uh, the governor there is saying illegal immigrants will have to be able to get concealed carry permits. In Texas, they say we have to hire at least 100 new um, staffers to process these uh, new, uh, the new paperwork for all these new immigrants. And it adds up to, and they have uh, uh, 1,100 pages of documents, inclu including uh, they have affidavits, sworn testimony as to why this is going to cost so much. So yeah. that's one so thing. they're doing it on a money basis. Texas is leading the charge. Right. 26 states have signed on. Um, but you know how these things go. It's like the gay marriage thing. Is one judge says yes, then one judge says no, and appeal court right. goes this. So the Supreme Court, because it's basically the states are saying, look, the president overreached. He's violating the Constitution. He can't uniformly change the law, and we're being punished because he's changing it. It's got to go to the Supremes. Yeah, eventually it would go to the Supreme Court. But I will say this to my uh, conservative friends out there who think that you, you're going to get your ultimate relief uh, by running to the courts. You may or may not. And as we saw with, uh, with the Obamacare decision, with Justice Roberts, and as we've seen 40 years after Roe versus Wade and five Republican appointees on the Supreme Court, they didn't overturn Roe versus Wade, right? They, they, they called Obamacare a tax. Lots of stuff is happening uh, on the court level with all these new bills. It's very important. Uh, Obama appointees and Clinton appointees and, by, believe it or not, some Bush appointees uh, to the federal courts that might not deliver the result to the states or to John Boehner if he decides to let the House go, uh, go through with the lawsuit, uh, give them relief on a separation of powers issue. So I think the power of the purse was the way that the uh, Congress had to go to really restrain the executive branch. And it was clear from the beginning in the lame duck session that they were never going to go to the mat using the power of the purse, that there were going to be a bunch of show votes. And then they could say, well, but we're going to the courts. Yeah, they didn't well, want to be in, in a position, they being the Republican Party, to turn public opinion against the party. And that brings me to my next question. This is a de facto legalization play. Now, everybody knows it. Uh, we're following it here in New York City. As soon as the president signed the executive order saying that uh, five million illegal aliens can't be deported, they have a right to stay here, then the city started giving them uh, ID cards to everybody, not just right. the five million. Exactly. Here, you, you just snuck in, you just overstayed your visa, here's a card, you're legitimate in our eyes. So it's a de facto open border play. You want to come on in, de Blasio will give you whatever you want to do. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Everybody knows it now. It's, it's, it's another charade, another ruse to get Bill, open yeah, borders and legalization exactly. of everybody. Go. And think about it, Bill. We have an opposition party. We have Republicans in charge in the House and the Senate. And all last year, we kept hearing from the Republicans, don't wait. When we're, don't, don't worry. When we're in charge, we're going to handle this. We're going to use the power of the purse. We're going to do this and that. And then they get in charge, and those same Republicans are saying stuff like, well, we need four or five more senators, so we have a veto-proof majority in the Senate, when what they need to do is send him a bill, uh, uh, Mr. O'Reilly, send, send them a bill that just funds everything in DHS except the administration of the executive amnesty. If they do that, and Obama decides not to sign that, it is Barack Obama who is effectively shutting down the federal government. The argument is easy to make, it's cleanly made, and it can be made coast to coast in a very cogent right, and logical fashion. But the fashion. downside to the argument is that the Republican Party believes that will alienate Hispanic Americans. Oh, okay. I guess the Constitution doesn't matter then. Well, yeah, here, okay. here's, here's, and I'm playing devil's advocate. We only yeah. have 30 seconds here. If the Republicans win the presidency in 16, all of this can be undone. Oh, really? Jeb's going to do that? It depends who it is. <laughs> yeah, well, he's depends not going to do is. that. You know, yeah. in, in, a, in the final analysis, the folks have to make the call. 
It's who they're going to put in there. Well, the new Gallup poll uh, just showed today that people, uh, by a six to one margin, new Gallup poll just out, want less immigration more than they want more immigration. So the people have spoken on the immigration question and the wages question, but the establishment refuses to listen to the people. So there you have it. Okay, Laura, thanks as always.